going to bring up my marquee tool and normally the feather setting by default is set to zero. I'm setting it way up to 200 and I'm going to select this general area of the photograph. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think something like that. You'll notice that when I release my uh, cursor here, the corners get rounded, and that is because of this feather. I'm actually um, feathering this selection by 200 pixels, so it's going to fade in to this selection and out. Now I'm going to um, select the inverse. What I want to do is select all of the area out here. By pre I'll, I'll do that by pressing Control shift i That gives me the inverse. And then I want to jump that selection up to a uh, second layer. So to do that, I press Control j So now I have this new layer here that has just this outside image data. Um, but your image doesn't look any different. To make it actually look different, I'm going to go to the layer style here and change it to multiply. That's the blend mode. And as you can see, it really dramatically darkens the edges of this photo. In fact, it really overly darkens it. But to fix that, you just slide down the opacity on that until you get to something you like. And I think that looks a little bit better. A little bit better. Good. Alright, so what is left to do on this image? Well, um, of course it is still out of focus, and there isn't really much that can be done about that. If you don't capture a sharp image, you're never really going to get true sharpness back into it. You can create the illusion of sharpness by applying sharpening filters after the fact. So I'll go ahead and do it on this image, keeping in mind that it's not as good as starting with a sharp image. So I'm going to select my background layer. Let me zoom in just so you can get a little bit better idea of what we're working with. If you take a look, you can see that there is quite a bit of noise in this photo. It sort of looks like film grain. That is digital noise. And if I apply a sharpening filter to this right now, it'll actually sharpen that noise and it'll make it look more grainy than it, than it actually is right now. So what I should do is denoise first, then sharpen, and uh, then we should be finished. Now since these next couple of steps I'm going to be doing are destructive, um, that is, they affect the actual pixels, what I'm going to do is duplicate this background layer um, so that the changes that I make are going to be on the copy of the background layer. And that way, if I mess it up, I can always just go back to my original background layer. Alright, so I'm going to go up to my filter menu, and um, you can do um, noise reduction from Photoshop by selecting Reduce Noise, but what I'm going to do is use Noise Ninja, which is what I prefer for my uh, denoising. And I will leave that on the defaults, click OK, and I end up with an image that is a little bit smoother. Now on to the sharpening. 
I will pick Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, or Unsharp Mask if you don't have Smart Sharpen available. Unsharp Mask, despite its name, is actually a sharpening filter. And looking at an area of this that has some relatively sharp edges. Um, you can still see that it's sharpening some noise, and you can't really get around that completely at all. So I will leave the settings right around there, click OK. And that is the image that we end up with. Now, you might be saying to yourself at this point, well, we've spent a lot of time on this and this picture still kind of sucks. And of course you're right, but take a look at where we started. Actually, I'm going to click on my little camera icon here to take a snapshot of where we are. And that is what we started with. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. So you can now really see how washed out and drab looking this was. And that's where we ended up, which I think is a significant improvement. Maybe still not something that I would post on a forum that I would be proud of, but at least something that I wouldn't find quite so embarrassing. If we've gotten to this point and you look at the end result and you say, well, I wish I'd made that a little bit darker in the shadows, then the nice thing about having used adjustment layers and one of the advantages of using Photoshop instead of GIMP is that you can go back here to your Curves Adjustment layer and just say, well, let me darken that up a little bit. And simple as that. Or, since we used a separate layer for a vignette, you can say, I'll raise the opacity on that vignette just a little bit. And you can uh, go back and play around with these adjustments as much as you want. All right, I guess I will leave it at that. I ho hope that you found something useful in this video, and um, stay tuned. I'll post another one, too, as long as I'm here. Starting point, ending point.